I feel like most people generally like dark hair. Really? Nice. I don't know. At least everybody asks me. What do you like? Yeah, where's the next one? Well, I'm saying if you had a like. Frame up. Frame up. That's not exciting for like. Yeah. Setting them up on Typical Tuesday, just beat the shit out of each other, try and do it stylishly and uh, kind of get some techniques down, get some good, get good rounds in, and then at least morning. And then evening wise, get some good grappling in again, rounds, a lot of technique. And then yeah, if more guys would show up, we could get more rounds in. Yes, it's 
And then get an underhook with your left arm on her leg. Yeah, okay, turn into her. Big down. Sean left already, right? Like he was here. Yeah, yeah. He was he's going home. Okay. Yeah, he's in the UFC too. So these guys come and uh, they get trained. I mean, treated for. Right at the base. Yeah. One of our big things here is making sure that people stay injury free and so their muscles have the right balance, their ligaments and tendons also have the right balance. Because again, you're, you're dealing with a sport that has to deal with all kinds of injuries and all kinds of other things that go on throughout the day, whether that's nutritional or training four or five times because you're mixing jiu-jitsu and wrestling and boxing. So it can be really easy for things to come out of alignment. And then if it is that way, then their training is not going to go very well. They can't cut weight because their knee hurts. Or they're going to end up you know, going into a fight at less than, say, 80%. Now, nobody's ever 100%. We sure do the best we can to get them there as close as possible. Spots, you know, we can just film. So all the fighters chill, eat, play, watch TV. I think this. Yeah, I think that's GW. <laughs> I think that's GW. And how long have you been here, Jackie? One month, maybe, I don't know. 
Что за борцовки? Вот столько потребностей. Миша, извини. Шеф-повар. Кто лучше всех готовит? Саид. Здесь Гай. Чемпион Ахмад. Сегодня мы будем говорить о здоровье. Вы имеете несколько разных шляпов. Я имею в виду, что здоровье критично для всех. But when you're dealing with athletes and, and the sports industry, what you do is you have to look at what they call nutrient timing, which is when are they eating what they're eating. So everybody knows carbohydrates are good for you. For the athlete, it's a little more critical, which is kind of counterintuitive to what's going out there with, oh, carbs are bad, carbs are bad. Um, but as far as repair for energy production, for all of this, even from a performance and a recovery standpoint, nutrition is absolutely critical. And so what we try to do here at Jackson Wink is we've actually, to my knowledge, are the only facility out there that has an in-house nutrition program. So we really try to focus on educating all of the fighters with, you know, A to Z on everything they need to know about nutrition and then also providing individual oversight for that. I think this is my favorite. I put, you know, a, a tablespoon of peanut butter in it and it's, it's great. For the next two hours, I'm, I'm fine, man. How important is it to watch your nutrition as you train constantly for hours? And that it, it, it is so important when it comes to recovery and also getting ready for a fight as far as cutting and things like that. From your perspective, just what's your mindset when it comes to nutrition? Just like you said, uh, it's important for recovery and every, everything else. One, if you have a big cut, um, to make your weight division, then you definitely gotta watch your nutrition like way, way out before the, the, the fight week, you know? Because otherwise you're gonna suffer a lot more with the water uh, weight cutting and everything else. So nutrition is very important. And that's one thing that I also learned a lot just by being here and being around these guys who've done it for you know many times and uh, just kind of picking their brains and different methods that they use and things like that. So nutrition is the key for uh, before most before the weight cut as well as uh, making sure your body is recovering and you have the, the energy for the practice because we're going constantly day in and day out. So you definitely need the right nutrition for your body to be able to keep you know recovering and, and keep going. The information is slowly getting out there, but it's just gonna take time and it's really a mindset change. Um, a lot of these men and women, when it comes to conditioning physically, they just get in this zone and it's like, we'll, we'll do whatever the coach says to do. They will put their bodies through some of the most excruciating training regimen. But as far as the nutrition, um, because for a long period of time, there hasn't been a big emphasis on it. I think that you know their mindset has been, well, I'll just deal with that a couple weeks out before the fight. But what I've seen as far as a trend is there's a lot more emphasis now on them wanting to get information and, and putting the, the dots together as far as, wait a minute, the foods that I put in my body really do affect my performance, my recovery, injury prevention, how I feel, how I sleep, even energy when they're not training. Um, it makes a, a big difference. Talk about just the culture of Jackson's, all of this. I've never seen this at any gym where you got dorms, you got guys living together like this college, that's a, a camaraderie. Like, how important is it just for that culture to be tight-knit when you're living around other fighters and things like that? Well, for me, for me, to me, it's, it's, it's a family. Um, it's a family away from home. Um, it's love. Um, the type of environment that I'm in and the, that we're in right now, it's like, it's like we're always in that constant fight mode. Even if you're not training or even if you're, like, you know, recovering from an injury or whatever, um, there's always like that, like that, like that, like that killer instinct that you have and that you will uh, adapt uh, in time. Um, everybody here is together. It's all about being a family. We get along great. Um, uh, everybody wants to help each other. Everybody teaches each other. Um, so it's, it's one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life and the best move I've ever made in my life was to come out here and leave home. It's just the people and the variety of cultures that we have here. So we come together and with the staff of, you know, Michael is a great manager and the coaching staff, the nutritionists and the chiropractors and every, everyone else. I think it's just the fact that we're all here uh, to improve and we know and we get that and we see the results in the octagon, in the big shows, and then we think, man, you know, I gotta get some of that if I wanna get to the next level. So I think just the fact that everyone is out here for the one purpose and uh, we're all like-minded, I think that's what makes it great, you know? Everyone is here for one purpose. In your, your perspective. 
Yeah, I think that uh, it's coaches also very important, but still the tank full of sharks. And uh, it's most important thing, much more important than you, go, you need coaching also, but this high level guys everywhere, it's most important. I think that's one of the reasons why we're, we're fairly successful, if we are successful, is that uh, it's kind of an underlying requirement around here is to make sure guys help each other out and everybody's good to each other. If you come in the door and you're and you're, you're the guy that's acting better than, you're not welcome. Either something happens and you're gone or everybody kind of ostracizes you. I think that's happened to a lot of camps out there um, with with the individuals that think they're better than. But uh, here, they check their ego at the door and they help everybody. So John Jones is willing to get out there and work with the amateurs. Um, Holly Holm is working with everybody. If I have a really good wrestler and I notice that he's working with a stand-up guy um, to help him out with his wrestling, I want to help him with, with his stand-up. So that's kind of the culture that I think we've bred over time. And I think that's huge. I think that that's gigantic around here is kind of have that uh, um, good family feeling where people know they can get help um, working on techniques they need to work on and they're willing to help others. So the culture of a school is, or a, a team or anything really is is important. Um, I always say the first battle is a morale battle. Um, having everybody kind of on the same same sheet of music, being able to move forward in the same direction, um, very supportive of each other. I think that's very important. Uh, what happens when you get uh, leadership that isn't super strong? You'll get factions and people hating other people, and that's going to happen no matter what. Especially in in the larger teams, you always have that. But you want to kind of mitigate that and keep it to a minimum and uh, try to kind of foster a positive training environment. Work around the inevitable friction that will happen between fighters um, as a team gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's pretty easy when you have a team of maybe 15, 20 people. It's not too, not too difficult to do. When you get up into the 50s, um, it gets a little challenging. And then, of course, it just kind of escalates from there but uh making a conscious effort to attack the culture to make sure it's a positive culture to make sure that your coaches continue that positive culture is is very important and honestly a good part of my day is spent doing that